welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much to my subscribers. Welcome newcomers. I hope you like what you see. And if so, be part of this journey with us. We are growing one big family. Thanks to all of you. And I am so grateful and humble by your beautiful comments and your uplifting messages. Thank you so much. Okay. So we're going to just touch a few uh, things. Um, so if the video is too fast for you, up top there's three little buttons. You can click there, slow down the video to the speed you'd like. Also, you can turn on your CC closed caption, um, and you can read whatever stitch I call out down here. Take notes, pause the video, and you take it from there. It makes it more easier for people that have a hard time to follow YouTube. I also would like to mention that I do have a crochet group on Facebook. It's a private group. I will leave the links below if you want to be part of my group. Uh, we're, you know, a bunch of beautiful ladies. You're more than welcome as long as you have a profile. There's a lot of scammers going on to the crochet groups right now, and especially with the links that says bit or cut. Don't open those links up. Those are scammers that go through your computer, through your phone, and steal every identity possible from you. So be very careful on that. Um, I also would like to mention, if you'd like to donate to help out the women in need for Thread, please do so. Below the video, there's a little bag with a dollar sign. You can donate there, whatever amount you'd like. Also, in the description box, there's my PayPal account. You can don donate there, whatever amount you'd like. Or, if you have extra Thread and extra yarn, you can contact me through Instagram message, email me. You can... Uh, contact me through uh, the Facebook group. I also have a Facebook page and uh, TikTok. So there's so many ways you can get a hold of me if you'd like to send out the thread or the yarn to these women that are desperately need in need of it. I will send you their name and their address. You're more than welcome to do that. And we're grateful and humble by it. Thank you so much. So most of the time I use a 3.5 hook, small one to tuck in loose ends, and of course a pair of scissors. And 99.9% .9 of the time I use four ply 100% cotton thread. These are Portugal threads. It's equivalent the same thing as Aunt Lydia number three cotton thread. Okay, just a little tiny, a little bit small, uh, thinner, but not by much. So we're going to get started. I want to thank every single one of you again. I also would like to mention at the beginning of my videos when I first started two years ago, I did not know how to call the stitch names in English. So uh, the first couple of dozen of videos, they're not well recorded. First, the app was terrible, so it's half screens, horrible. And because I did not know the name, um, I would just, you know, explain it my own way that I knew how and I apologize for that but if you go through some of those videos and you are creating those pieces because there's some of you that have been texting me on it and questioning me uh, please feel free to ask any questions I am here to help you some of them I have recreated of course with the proper codes for the stitch calling some of them I still have to create I just haven't had any time for it but don't hesitate question me and I will answer you ASAP we're gonna get started thank you so much everybody okay and of course, if you have not subscribed, please do so and hit that bell notification for new uploads to be notified of the new videos that I uh, bring out every week. Okay. Okay, everyone. So today we're going to create this beautiful doily for Christmas. I've been getting a lot of requests again for the Christmas doilies. So I created, designed this new one. It's 33 centimeters. Now I've used the um, very shiny bling bling gold. I know it's kind of hard to tell on camera. Let's see, maybe if I can lower a little bit here. But this is the color, very shiny. And I've used it around here, all slip stitch. And I've also used the gold beads, which you can get them at your dollar store, your Dollarama, your um, Dollar Tree, um, so not expensive. You can have a beautiful dining room set up, looking so elegant and expensive without being expensive. So we're going to start to create this beautiful piece. I hope you enjoy it. Very simple. It's just that you have to keep count. Um, now, when we get to here, you have to pay attention because we need to increase by like four times. We need to have 
154 double crochets, okay? Just before I forget, because I could get there and forget it. And this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Row 10, 154 double crochets. Why? Because we need to do 14 groups of 10 double crochet and skipping one space. And that's the total we need to get 154. Okay, so we're going to get started. Hook size 3, uh, my threads, which I'll be creating in the green. So you can alternate also your table if you don't want to have it all red. You can have one set up green, one set up red um, as placemats, okay? And so 100% cotton thread for ply. It's the same, almost the same as Aunt Lydia number three, which is perfect for these placemats. If you're going into number 10, it's too thin. You're going to have to add a few more uh, threads uh, to get the thickness to the Aunt Lydia number 10. So number three is perfect for that on Aunt Lydia. And uh, a pair of scissors, of course, to cut your, your threads and a small hook to tuck in loose ends. Now, of course, you could use white if you wanted to, or you could have used silver bling bling if you wanted to, or just crystals. I mean, you can play around with the colors as much as you'd like. Okay, um, this is 33 centimeters in. Okay, let's get started, everyone. Please don't forget to give a thumbs up on the video. Share the video. Invite your friends and family to be part of this journey. Support the channel by subscribing. It's free. And hit that bell notification um, for the new uploads. Thank you, everyone. Now, the first thing you want to do is that slip stitch knot. Let me just get a little bit of a close-up. So you just make an X on your finger. Place your thumb. Grab your thread here from behind, bring it to the front. Now take your circle, put it in the front, put your thumb over it so it doesn't go anywhere. And you do your first chain. Now we're going to pull here because we don't need it to be that big. Well, you'll have a hard time working with it, okay? So you hold it in place and we did one chain, two, three, and four. Three for double crochet, one for space. We're going to do a total of eight double crochet inside of this magic circle. Now, in case you have a hard time, you can do a five chain. One chain space. And double crochet. We're going to proceed this way all the way until we have eight double crochets, separated space of one chain. And then we're going to pull on it and close it together. I'll meet you at the end. This is row one. So I've done my eight double crochets. I'm closing my space because we don't want a big hole there. I'm coming in my third chain with a slip stitch. We're going to go up one, two, three for double crochet. And inside of the space where we have one chain, we're going to do three um, double crochet. two, three, this is row two, on top of the double crochet with double crochet, inside of the space, double crochet with double crochet, and I said I was using hook number three, and here I am using, I'm, I have such a bad habit with using this hook, it's my favorite hook, it's, it's so beat up and, and very light, but you can use a 3.5, uh, obviously, because Aunt Lydia is a little bit thicker. Not by much, but a little bit thicker than my thread. So you definitely need the 3.5, okay? So we are going to do three inside of the space, inside here, where we have one chain, and one on top of the double crochet. I'll meet you at the end. So I've done my 32 double crochet that means three inside one on top of the double crochet going into row three so what i'm going to do is one chain and i'm i'm going to come back into the same space and do a single because i don't want it to leave like a big mark of just of chains okay one two chain 
For me, it's a double crochet, so a single two chain and one two for space. So we're going to skip the first one here. Now make sure that you are careful because a lot of times since they're so close when we close in we tend to forget that this one is here right next to it okay so we skip this one we go into the next one because a lot of times we have the tendency to skipping right over because we don't see this one as well right chain two skip a space into the next one chain two skip a space into the next one we're going to proceed this way all the way around. I'll meet you at the end. Okay, so I finished doing my little squares and I have 16 little squares. Okay, again, I'm going to do one chain, come back into the same space and do a single and chain two. That's a double crochet. I'm coming into the space and repeating exactly the same thing as we did on row two. So we're doing three double crochets inside of the space and one double. Going into row five. So one, two, three, four chain for me, five for some of you. So we're going to skip a space and going to the next space. Two chain, skip a space into the next space. Skip a space into the next space. Now, row five and six are identical the same way. So we're going to repeat row six doing two chain and double crochet over double crochet exactly like we have here. Okay, so we're, we're doing row five now and row six will be exactly the same. And I'll tell you the total of the little squares at the end which I'm not sure yet if it's 32 or 34 but I'll let you know at the end okay okay you guys so I finished doing row five and six one two three four five six and I have 32 little squares okay so now let me just check my pattern here so row seven, very simple, go up, chain three inside of each space. We're going to do two double crochets and one on top of the double crochet. So very simple, nothing to it. Two double crochets and one on top of the double crochet. So that's row seven. Okay, I'll meet you at the end. Okay, everyone. So. We're going to go to row seven. I think it might have jumped the recording on row one, two, three, four. But just to verify with you, on row four, it's three double crochet inside of the space, one on top of the double crochet. Three double crochet, one on top. Okay, just to make sure. That's why it's always important to look ahead of the video. Sometimes there is certain explanations after that. Okay, chain three. Now we're going to do this a little bit different. Here we're going to do two double crochets inside of this space. Next space we're going to do three double crochets inside of the space one on top of the double crochet. So it's very similar to the one here. The only difference is we'll have one block of two, one block of three, one block of two, one block of three double crochets. So this space here is two double crochets because we need to increase because of the uh, edging. We have to have the right total for the edging. And I'm trying to increase now uh, as much as I need to. So here we're gonna have three double crochets, okay? So when we get to almost uh, the beginning of the edging, we'll be more or less on the right, on the right uh, terms of, of the double crochets, okay? So first one, chain three inside, two double crochet, one double crochet on top of double crochet, three inside, one double crochet, two, one double crochet, three. Now we're gonna do two, and then three, and then two, and then three, all the way to the end, okay? 
So we've reached the end, and at the end we're going to add the three double crochets in the same space. So two and three. We're going to close in on the third chain with a slip stitch. Okay? So on to row eight. So row eight, we're going to do five because we're going to repeat row five and six. Okay? So five, and we're going to skip a space and into the next one. Chain two. Skip a space into the next one. So this is no different than row five and six. Chain two. Skip a space into the next one. So we're going to do this row the same way and the next row the same way also. Okay? So I'll meet you at the end of row nine. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're going to do row nine the same way, and I'll meet you at the end of row nine. So it's going to be exactly like five and six. Okay, double crochet over double crochet and two chain on the same thing on row nine. If your stitch is too tight, then you can do a three chain. But if your stitch is okay, or just a bit tight, you're okay with two chain. If it's extremely tight, then do a three chain space, okay? Okay, you guys, so the next row, normally we would have to do an increase, but in this case, I've already added an increase already as it is on the little squares here, so we'll have less to do on this row here. We need to have 154 double crochet. Now, if we're to do one on top of the double crochet, two inside, one on top of the double crochet, two inside, it's going to give us a uh, total of 169. That is way too much. So we'd have to cut down on the next row by 15 double crochets. So what did I do? I decided just no no regular count, just jumped, uh, let's say here, two square, actually, yeah, two squares, I put a pen, two squares, I put a pen one square, you know, I sort of separated more or less my little markers 15 times, because we need to cut down 15 times by, by doing the two double crochets inside and one on top of the double crochet, and I'll show you in a minute how it's done. So you got to, you know, break it 15 times with your marker all around, so the, you know, the pattern can balance out. So we're going to do chain three. So I know inside of here I have to do two double crochets, okay, and one on top of the double crochet. Now where I have the markers, I'm only going to do one double crochet inside, okay? So we can have that 154 double crochets. So we don't have to go through a headache on the next row. So chain three, two double crochets, one on top of the double crochet, two double crochets inside, one on top. So here I'm going to already decrease only one double crochet. So I'm going to do only one and one on top of the double crochet. So I've already decreased it. We need to take out 15 double crochets, right? So I've already only did one. That means I already took one out. So I have 14 left to take out. So then we're going to do two double crochets and one on top of the double crochet and again two double crochets so I pretty much just spread it out there's no no uh, specific count on the markers okay just so we can even out the pattern so two double crochets inside and one on top so here I have a marker so I'm going to do only one so that means I've cut down already two that we need to decrease right and then I continue to proceed two double crochets one in, and one on top of the double crochet, two double crochets until my marker, and then I'll just do only one. Okay, so I know that from the start I already did two decreases. So here I'm only going to do one. So now I have three decreases, and it's going to go all the way around exactly as you put your markers just to spread it out so it's not so you know noticeable on the decrease and we're going to have a total of 154 double crochets okay so i'll meet you at the end and no specific order people just skip two two squares one square three squares whatever you think you know it's more or less um 
pretty good around, okay? Okay, everyone, so I pretty much finished doing my 154 double crochet. That means I have took out 15 double crochets uh, by doing only one in the center where I have the markers, okay? And everything else is two double crochets. And then where I have the marker, I put one only. So that'll give you the right amount. We don't need to break our heads more with increased decreases because we're already pretty much done and it just you know works out perfect so now row 11 we're going to build groups of 10 double crochet so chain three into the next space we're going to do double crochet so that's once three times okay so that once two three four I'm going to use my three because I like my stitch here to be a little bit more closed in. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. I'm going to do one, two, three four, five chain. I'm going to skip one space and into the next one and create my groups of 10 again. You're supposed to end up with 14 groups of 10 at the end. Now, if you happen to make a mistake on this row by um, one extra that you probably forgot to take out or you have an extra double crochet you just jump you know you can jump from here instead of putting here you can go directly here or you jump here it's probably less noticeable on your five chain instead of jumping one you jump two and if you're short one to just add two together so it's fixable it's not a problem okay so i'll meet you at the end we're gonna have 10 double crochets five chain and skip a space Okay, everyone, so I pretty much did my 14 groups of 10. Now I've come to the end, and if I'm to do my number 10 here, that means I won't have any skip. So I added on my last one, two together. I must have skipped something somewhere. It doesn't matter. One, two, three, four, and five chain. doesn't change anything on the pattern, and it works out perfect. Okay? So... Now on to row 12. So row 12, we're going to do a slip stitch. To the third double crochet, we're going to go up one chain back into the same space. And do a single one, two, three chain we're going to skip one two three on your fourth one single we're going to come directly into the space here and create eight double crochets two three four five six seven and eight eight double crochets. I'm going to skip one, two on my third one, single. One, two, three. One, two, three on my fourth one, single. I'm going to come directly inside of the five chain and do eight double crochets. We're going to proceed this way all the way around. I'm going to do mine and I'll meet you at the end. Okay, so very simple. Skip the first, the first two went to your third with a single. Skip one, two, three into your fourth with a single, and then directly into the five chain and do your eight double crochet. Okay, so I've reached the end. I've done my eight double crochets. I'm gonna come where I started the first single with a slip stitch. I'm gonna come into the center where I have that three chain with a single and before anything. So here is where we're going to start adding the um, 
gold pearls, okay? Beads, whatever you want to call them. So this is a perfect size for me to fit my 2.2 2 hook. Or is it 1? I think it's 175 hook. They don't have the number. Well, I know the beads is 8 millimeters, but the, the hole in the center is a little bit bigger than my regular 8 millimeters, okay? So now I'm going to come in my first double crochet, and I'm going to take out once. We're going to do a double crochet. The only difference is I'm going to come in through the bead and do a slip stitch. I'm coming in to the next double crochet, just a normal double crochet, okay? Now I'm going to come in again, put my bead into place here, and I'm coming into the next one and doing my double crochet. So I'm taking it once, I'm coming in through the bead. Of course my hook is a little bit smaller than, than what it's supposed to be for the thread, right? but it's perfect for my bead. So I'm coming in, put my hook through the bead and close in with a slip stitch into the next one, double crochet. So we'll have one bead, one double crochet, one bead, one double crochet. Coming into the next one, putting my bead in the hook. Can you tell my hook is so old? It's with bandages, it's rusted, but it just works perfect for so many things. So. Again, take out once. I'm coming in through the holes in my bead and I'm going to slip stitch. Next space, double crochet. So it takes four beads each motive here. Again, take out once, come in through the bead and slip stitch and do my last double crochet okay now i'm going to come in the center here of the three chain and do a single now if you find that it's it's pulling too much for some of you that have a tight stitch you can do one chain Okay, this way it stays freely without pulling. So one chain, and that's what I'll do. I'll do one chain. But for people that have a loose uh, stitch, then you do only, uh, you don't do one chain. Okay, so take out and slip stitch into the closing up the bead. Next space, double crochet. So the first one takes the bead, and the last one is just a double crochet. Just a little reminder in case you think you're, you're lost or you're not doing it right. Okay, so next space, double crochet. So we're having a double crochet in between them. Okay, when you get to the end, you do one chain, and you come into the three chain here, and you do your single exactly like we did here. Okay, so... I'll meet you at the end. This is very simple. There's nothing to it. If you need to rewind, then go ahead. If you need to slow down the video and you are not sure how, in the link, you can click on how to slow down the video. The link is below. It's a two-minute video or one minute and a half. Okay? So, very simple. And it makes beautiful, luxurious table for Christmas, right? So take out once and then hold your bead so you can pull it through. So you got to make sure you got a small hook for that. But also, of course, having a small hook, it goes right through the threads too. So you have to be careful and also give it a good stretch here because it's not the same size of hook. Chain one, come in where you have your three chain with a single. And this is what it looks like, okay? 
I know on camera now with the brightness, you can't really tell that much the beautiful shiny gold it is, but it really is beautiful gold. Okay, so I'll meet you at the end. Okay, everyone, so I'm coming to the end. I did my last double crochet. I did my one chain. I'm coming in where I have my single with a slip stitch. Now, we have the first double crochet with the bead, right? So now we're going to do double crochets. So my first double crochet exactly where I have the bead, one chain into the next double crochet. So we're going to have the eight double crochets just the same as we did on the previous row. One chain. Where I have the bead, I'm doing one double crochet. One chain. Next double crochet, which is the one that's right after the bead. One chain space. Double crochet where we have the bead. One chain space. Double crochet on top of the double crochet, one chain. Inside of the space here, the bead, double crochet, one chain, and my last double crochet. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. I'm going to come where the single is, where the slip stitch. I'm coming in again where I have my first bead and doing my first double crochet. One chain space into the next space, double crochet, one chain space into where I have the bead, double crochet. So we need 56 beads. Um, I think I forgot to mention, but everything will be listed on the description box. And usually when you watch videos in order to get your materials and how much you need. You should always check in the description box for all the information like uh, size of hook, how much yarn or thread or whatever the case may be. Approximately because everybody's threads and yarns are different. So again on my last one double crochet. So we're going to have the eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven. I missed one somewhere. Don't know where I missed it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, I didn't miss it. I guess I'm seeing things into my single with a slip stitch. So we're going to proceed this way all the way until the end. I'll meet you at the end. Okay, you guys are pretty much finished doing row 14, going to row 15, which is the last row. So I did my slip stitch on the single. I'm going to come into the first space here with the slip stitch. Oh, actually, I should do a single, sorry. I don't know, what was I thinking? Okay, into the first little square here, single. One, two, three. Peacock. Now you can do this in gold if you have gold, it would look absolutely stunning also. One, two, three, peacock, next space, one, two, three, peacock. Now on the next space, so we're going to have three peacocks in one side and three peacocks in the other. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five chain, I'm going to do my peacock, this is the middle one. Next space, one, two, three, peacock, next space, one, two, three, peacock, next space, which is the last one, three chain, so three chain, single. Now I'm going to come in where we have that slip stitch and slip stitch. There's never a dull moment in this place. It's either the phone 
or a client for nails or hair or dogs barking or the mill man or the milkman or the fish man, you know, it's never a dull moment here, people. Sorry about that. I had to disconnect to answer a call. Okay, so slip stitch. Now we're going into the first one again with a single one, two, three, and do our peacock. Never a dull moment. Next space. One, two, three. So we did the single, three chain. Peacock, next space. Single, three chain. And peacock on the next one. So we have our three peacocks. Next one, five chain. One, two, three, four, five. And peacock. Next space, we're going to do the three chain and the three peacocks. Next space, single, one, two, three. And last space, one, two, three. Where we have the slip stitch, we're going to do a slip stitch and then to the first square here with the peacocks again. So you're going to continue to do yours all the way to the end and then I'll come back to you. And we're going to do the little gold slip stitch around the edge here, okay? Okay, everyone, so I'm going to do the gold. I'm going to leave a little bit of, of string so we can tie it at the end, okay? So where we have not, okay, so this is one, two, three on your third one here. I'm going to come anywhere, grab my string. So I pull my string to the front and next space I'm just grabbing my string from the back slip stitch so this whole row is just slip stitch if your stitch is too tight you can do one chain and slip stitch one chain and slip stitch we don't want it over tighten so it doesn't crample up so I'm loosening it up as much as I can and it's just going to go like this all the way around the same way as we have on here. So this pretty much does it for this tutorial, people. Thank you so much again. Please don't forget to give a thumbs up on the video. It's very important. And if you're not subscribed, please do so and hit that bell notification for the new uploads. Thank you so much, everybody. Until next time. Bye-bye, everyone. I'll have a little video and the pictures in this play at the end. Okay, guys, I decided to come back because I was trying to see how it would look, the gold of this one here, too. And I like it, so I'm going to put it on. So that's an option for you. Another option is you can buy some satin lace um, um, and put in through these ones here in gold. It would look beautiful with a little bow tie or something gorgeous also. Okay, so you have that option.